Never. I'll never turn to the dark side. You failed, Your Highness. I am a Jedi. Live, this is one for the record. I'm Diana. <clears throat> and today is December 28th, 2012. It is Friday. We made it. Friday evening. And here are your updates for today. First, we'll go to the Extinction Protocol 2012 and beyond. Philippines, storm, death toll rises to 11. Also, yesterday, earthquake panic grips region of Black Sea near Russian city of Sochi. <clears throat> That's all that's new on the Extinction Protocol. Moving on to the watchers watching the world. Haze over eastern China. What's up? January 2013 encounters of the planetary kind. They're talking about, you'll see, um, Saturn, Jupiter, Venus, and Mars. And they'll make appearances next to our moon. Nanotech self-fulfilling water bottle. Inspired by a beetle. Hmm. That's it for the uh, extinction protocol. I mean, I'm sorry, the watchers. Moving on. E and &E news, energy news. I just got done watch, listening to all of Dr. Deagle's show. So I'll put up. Oh, uh, your dogs next door barking. I'll have to put up uh, the Earth Changes part of it. Alrighty then. So that will be attached to here. <clears throat> okay, today, paper. Navy State... Sailors have experienced great physical pain after Fukushima radiation exposure, says lawsuit. <clears throat> Therapies such as chelation and bone marrow transplants required. Heads up. NSFW. Footage of alarms going off during radiation scans on USS Ronald Reagan. This is crazy. We're dying and we're taking videos of it. Hey, put that camera away. Wow. Heads up. One year old named in Fukushima lawsuit by U.S. Navy members. Legal expert in Tokyo, Fukushima perpetrators are escaping responsibility. Uh-oh, heads up. Okay, U.S. Canada. Newspaper. Sinkhole burps up organic material. Experts on December 18th burps are large gas outbursts up to 50,000 cubic feet. Yesterday, new flyover a giant sinkhole shows large area of flooding to south. Alrighty then. Get rid of that. I'll attach uh, what I can attach of the uh, Nutramedical uh, Report Earth Changes part. That's all I have to say. And uh, it's been very cold in... Uh, Space Coast, Florida. Seems a little bit warmer tonight. Starting to rain. It was down in the 40s yesterday. That's why I had to wear the earmuffs. Alrighty then. You take care. And always be prepared. And I'll try to put the uh, prep, uh, how to be prepared also from Dr. Uh, Bill Deagle. But it's going to take me a while. There's some stuff I'm going to have to not play. Uh, to my commentators out there, I'm just showing you what's out there. 
I don't need your your comments. You know. So if you want to miss out on some information, that's on you. Alrighty then. But it's still out there all over YouTube. So take care and be prepared. Alrighty then. GCN Great Talk Radio starts here. Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. And um, the uh, Alexander, this uh, story about what's going on in the south end of the Cor Cor Sea of Cortez, um, you see the war going on in Mexico. There's more dead there than there has been in years and years of war in Afghanistan and Iraq. Um, <clears throat> multiple times now, exposing the evil doings of Felipe Calderon and all his uh, uh, henchmen, you know, killing people. And it turns out in her new book, Mexico in Llamas, which is Mexico in Flames, Annabelle and Hernandez, it's at conscientiaradio.com. I just spoke about it. Uh, I mean, she's, she hits it right on the nail. Mexico is dead. Maybe we should get her on the show sometime. Well, Down the you want to bring her... Yeah, if you want to bring her on the show, that would be worthwhile because we have you on sometimes multiple times. I think this last week you've been on a bunch of times. Uh, talking about spiritual things, we have Pastor Dave uh, Lee on. And the two of you are great having you on. By the way, have, starting on the 9th, uh, we'll have an hour where both you and Pastor Dave will be on every Wednesday. And we'll cover controversial things. In fact, we have had some, a lot of positive and a few negative feedback. What people have to understand is when I pre-screen people like Pastor Dave, the radical things he's teaching, because a lot of people said, we want you to publish uh, your statement of faith. Well, my statement of faith uh, is very radical. It is the original way that was taught by Jesus. It's not the disturbed and truncated and abbreviated or milk and cookies way of many of the common churches nowadays. It's the special forces Christianity you need to have to survive the tribulation that's coming. Precisely. I mean, it's about the simplicity or the singularity of understanding what Jesus Christ represents, all right? Right. Mm -hmm. He represents the transformation of human beings into a different kind of creature. He represents changing your heart of stone with the commandments written on it like rules into a heart of flesh with his DNA coded into your very actions and the very nature of your being. That's what makes it different. Now, that's what makes it different is that you're no longer just redeemed by God where your sins are taken away. You're transformed into a new creature. Well, and, when the uh, Holy Spirit is with you, you can feel inside every uh, uh, part of your body, your DNA lights up like um, like uh, traffic lights. I mean, it's just amazing. Right. Now, let's get into some of the things. Let's analyze uh, uh, 2012. Uh, what would you say about 2012 in terms of what's happening in the world, the positive and negative things are going on, uh, Anne and, and uh, Alexander? Well, I'll let Anne go first if she wants, or if you yeah. want, I can yeah, take it, Anne. Yeah, and you can talk about what you've seen. A lot of people say they don't see anything happening. I see everything. I mean, you well, mentioned well, about yeah, them cutting off the water and the rivers for the for the barges. You mentioned so many things about earth changes. Let's go through all the positive and negative things that have happened. Well, of course, all the earth changes. Uh, we have volcanoes that have been dormant for 25 or 30 years or even 50 years, and they're, they're becoming active. We have a volcano now, another volcano uh, just north of the Pue Ue volcano. And you remember the Pue Ue volcano was the one that sent ash around the world, and it closed the the flying the um, airline lanes, the air lanes for uh, southern New for New Zealand and for southern Australia. There was so much volcanic ash in the air. Now we have another volcano called uh, Kupahui, which is just um, south of Pue Ue. <laughs> So they sound the same, don't they? Yeah, they do sound very similar. <laughs> Kopu uh, anyway, yeah, it's not yeah. sending ash so much as uh, fog. That's volcanic organic gases. It's sending out sulfur dioxide. Now, and it's sending it to uh, almost to the um, bottom part of Africa. So it's making its way across the Atlantic. And the trouble with sulfur dioxide is that it mixes with the water vapor in the air, 
and uh, forms acid rain. So it's going over uh, the bottom part of Argentina, and when it does that and it rains, then the, the plants will die. And uh, the same thing happened. The um, acid rain was killing the plants, the trees, in Minnesota and Wisconsin and along the East Coast, and they traced that back to California uh, because of the uh, air pollution, the smog. And that's when the um, EPA got started and they formed the South Coast Air Quality Management District, which was not bounded by political boundaries. It, it had its own boundary system. And they went in and they determined point sources and they determined um, uh, mass sources and they clamped down and, you know, they have a different gasoline now in, in uh, Southern California. And the uh, acid rain stopped. So um, sulfur dioxide is a very bad um, pollutant um, because it, when it falls, it falls as an acid. By the way, the biggest amount of acid uh, rain is coming out of um, Mount Erebus and Antarctica and volcanoes all over the Earth, including under oceanic. They exceed by tens of thousands of times the amount of radiation of acid rain generated by plants, except in places like China and India where there's no environmental standards at all, and that's significant. So we shouldn't be trading with these countries unless we put scrubbers on their smokestacks. We've cleaned up our act here in North America. We were in Los Angeles, like I was uh, there visiting in 1978. Uh, compared to now, the area is pristine in L.A. compared to the late 70s. It was unbelievably polluted with uh, leaded gasoline uh, and toxins and uh, ozone all over the city and the brown smog everywhere. Uh, so uh, we've cleaned up our act here in North America. But in terms of these third world countries, India, China, Indonesia, no, they're a mess. Um, you just want to cover a little bit more of this hypothetical. I'm going to post over from Wikipedia. Nemesis is a hypothetical red dwarf or brown dwarf originally postulated in 1984 to be orbiting the sun at a distance of 95,000 astronomical units or 1.5 light years, somewhat beyond the Oort cloud to explain a perceived cycle of mass extinctions in the geological record, which seems to occur more often at intervals of 26 million. As of 2011, over 1,300 brown dwarfs have been identified, and none are inside the solar system. More than more recent theories suggest that other forces, like close passings of other stars or the angular effect of gravi uh, galactic gravitational plane working against the outer solar orbital plane, may be a cause of orbital perturbations of some of our solar system objects. And by the way, we have started passing through the galactic plane. Uh, 20, 15 to 20 years ago, we're at the midpoint December 21st and we'll continue to pass through it for 15 to 20 years. But we are passing through what's called the gravitational plane, so we're passing through a change and we're now in what's called new space or we're called the torsion field of this change confirmation, which affects the plasma physics of our stars and the Earth. So that, by the way, will change the movement of magma inside our planet, it'll change the movement of plasma inside the stars and increase the risk of a major coronal mass ejection. <clears throat> so that's one factor and we know that one of the things that the minds had correctly, even though it wasn't an incident right on that day, is the change in the torsion field, which is the fifth dimensional conformational field of space-time, which forms wormholes, etc. Uh, we are now in what's called the northern side of the galactic plane as of roughly last Friday. And now we're moving into a time and space that's going to change the plasma physics of our stars. So I'll just read on. Um, in 2011, Corin Baylor Jones did an analysis of craters on the surface of the Earth and reached the conclusion that the earlier findings of simple periodic patterns applying periodic comet showers dislodged by a hypothetical nemesis star to be statistical artifacts found the crater record shows no evidence of, for nemesis. However, in 2010, Milot and Bambach found strong evidence in the fossil record confirming the extinction uh, event periodicity originally claimed by Rolp and Shepkowski in 1984, but at a higher confidence level and over time period nearly twice as long. The infrared astronomical satellite called IRAS failed to discover nemesis in the 1980s. The two-mass astronomical survey, which ran in 1997 to 2001, failed to detect an additional star or brown dwarf in the solar system. Using newer and more powerful infrared telescope technology, able to detect brown dwarfs as cool as 150 kelvins out of a distance of 10 light years from the sun, results from the wide field uh, infrared survey explorer called WISE have not detected nemesis. David Morrison, a senior scientist at NASA, known for his work in the risk assessment of near-Earth objects, has written, no evidence for the evidence of an object like nemesis since it should have been detected in infrared sky surveys.
you know, that's what they're saying, but my sources tell me that Nemesis is out there and that it does come in. And there's other objects that pass through that are passing uh, cometary objects, even planet-sized objects, that can affect the Earth and cause plasma storms on the sun. Is your whole health constantly challenged? Would you like to age less? Radio, something more important. Search no more. We are the GCN Radio Network. Fukushima and the NRC. Let's get into that. Yeah, I wanted to um, let people know that the uh, Nuclear Regulatory Commission, they haven't up until this time, well, we've been having CMEs hit the earth. That's a coronal mass ejection. That is a very complicated, very intense magnetic field that is ejected by the sun. And if it's earth directed, will interrupt our power grid, among other things, because it interacts with our magnetic magnetosphere, which are the lines of magnetic force that protect us from the um, uh, space debris that otherwise would would uh, come through. Uh, it captures especially the electrons, and uh, they're very fast moving and carry a negative charge. It doesn't do much for the protons. The protons energize the sky, and the um, um, Anyway, the NRC has decided that they're going to address a, the, uh, that the electrical grid is vulnerable to a prolonged outage caused by extreme space weather. Well, we know so that uh, from uh, talking to Ernie Gunderson's wife and Ernie and talking to other people who are getting feedback from the NRC that are harping on this isn't being ignored by the government departments in the NRC. They know that this is now in the blogosphere, this fact that we've talked about this with you and with Chris Harris and other nuclear experts. And uh, they can't ignore it. Uh, if they have a major CME at Carrington event of 1859, uh, uh, the power grid and nuclear reactors will go into hot shot down and they will lose their critical backup power and uh, you'll have a nuclear explosion. Yeah, and they know also that their emergency backup generators uh, have been fried by ground currents caused by CMEs. I mean, that's happened at numerous nuclear plants in the United States over the past two years. And I right. think I've reported on some of that, and so has Chris Harris. Yeah, so exactly. So what they're going to do is they're going to consider uh, a, a backup power <coughs> for their spent fuel pools, and, it, and it, the backup power should last um, two years. So they're expecting the power grid to be down for two years, should... Uh, Carrington event. Now that was a, that was finally decided to be an X54 um, ejector from the sun. The, the, the flare itself was an X54, and the CME that was ejected with it that did the damage to the telegraph lines um, accompanied that X54 flare. But it arrived a couple of days later. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting. So uh, we have volcanic activity. We have X54 flares. These kind of th things are going to increase dramatically in the next two years. I would say the chances of a major CME knocking off power grid in the northern hemisphere is roughly 80 to 90 percent in the next two years. Would you say that seems reasonable? Well, yeah, they're putting some counterintelligence out on that. They're saying that maybe <coughs> we're, that we're not going to reach the peak in 2013. They think no, that's not true. They, 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 they know. Yeah, they say, all my sources from regular and classified sources tell me the peak is going to occur in this year and next year, 2013-2014, and the passage of the C-2012 S-1 uh, super comet, 26-mile or larger comet, according to Professor McCanny, is likely to precipitate a major CME. We also have the research of Dr. Mueller, who was at UC Berkeley for years, 1980, I think it was 85, let me look at the yeah, 1984. He published his book, which you can get on Amazon, called Nemesis, the Death Star, and he refers to, to, to in the Inatio expert uh, film that was published in 2011, he calls it Nemesis, the Sun's Evil Twin. 
Now, I think that his theory is rock solid and nerdy for all these years since 1984, and that's a long time. We're talking about 28 years. No one has been able to counteract Dr. Mueller's research. Nobody. So if you look at this, it f fully explains the red dwarf star pulling in, which is the most common star in, this, in the galaxy. Uh, and 70% uh, to 80% of all the, the stars in the galaxy have, are binary, and about 14% or so are tri have trinary, has three stars. <clears throat> this is a very common pattern to see one massive star, which is, and dwarf star is likely one tenth or less mass than the Earth. We know that the uh, this uh, dwarf star is likely two to three, uh, uh, you know, distances from the solar system, solar distances for the size of the, of the solar system. Out, so it literally circulates in around 3,600 years, which in perfect, fits in perfectly with the events that happened at the time of Moses. Uh, and, uh, uh, sorry, not 20, 3,600 years, uh, 26 million years. And as it comes in every 26 million years, it causes extinction level events when it pulls in comets from the Oort cloud. There are other cycles that precipitate other disasters that occur at 3,600 years, at 10,800 years, 100,000, 105,000 years, and 360 years that are inducing ice ages. So there's solar and galactic weather intervened by specific events and alignments that are major changes on the Earth. And right now, volcanism is increasing. I talked to Alexander Bachman, who's here now, and he has a major release of information that was published in San Francisco a few weeks ago about a discovery at the south end of the Baja California, the Sea of Cortez, and it's the terminus of the San Andreas Fault. In the last year, I think there have been three or four, 7.2 plus major superquakes, and now they've discovered a major under oceanic volcano down there that's precipitating all these super earthquakes, which are likely to precipitate a, if it's a major eruption because it has rheolite in it, a major super earthquake which will trigger off the San Andreas Fault to cause California to have major problems. Hi, Dr. Deagle. So, this is Alexander Bachman. Hi. Yeah, hi. Yeah, to Alexander, give us all the details because you discovered this. You pulled yeah, up the research. The data. I'm just going <clears> to <throat> quote from the scientists, okay? These are scientists, all right? I'm not trying no, to... No, you're quoting from the actual published said, article. It's only 100 kilometers from land, and when the sun is setting, you can see Cabo from where the volcano, underwater volcano is. She said right. both the Baja Peninsula and mainland Mexico near Alarcón Rice have cities and luxury resorts. And uh, the rhyolite lava carries more gas and volatile things that are likely to cause explosions than basalt. And when the magma meets the water, it vaporizes instantly, driving an even more explosive eruption. Quote, there's definitely explosive deposits there, and that is of extreme concern, given that the ridge is so close to land and that the tsunami potential of a big explosion there. Paduan said, we don't know how to explosive, and that is something we are definitely trying to figure out. So there you go. Yeah, amazing. Well, just with that, just with that alone is a confirmation of the same thing that's ha happening over there in um, San uh, in Santorini in Greece. The same thing's happening in Italy. It's, I mean, it's the, all the coastlines, especially on the Pacific Rim. All the countries around the Pacific Rim, all the tectonic plates are separating and expanding. And this is because our planet is going into birth pangs. It's very simple to understand. Yeah, it really is. Now, the birth pangs... I believe that people like uh, Senator Feinstein and these senior government officials have full knowledge that there is a extinction level event coming. I can't put a date on it. Uh, we talked last year that uh, John had some source of data indicating that it was coming into the inner solar system. Now remember, this takes 3,600 plus years to do that. Uh, the it would say not the nemesis dwarf star, but it could be that they're watching nemesis as well. Uh, we don't know what it is. What we can say is that the globalists, all their actions portray that there's some object coming in, whether it's a comet or a planet-sized object, that will cause major cataclysms on Earth, and they want control before these extinction-level events occur. That's what we can analyze. Well, you know, so many people are coming at me, against me right now, because uh, we said 21-12-2012 was the big day. No, 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 no. It's a cyclical... You've come to expect winter specials from Herbal Healer Academy, and we're not going to let you down. Battle through cold and flu season with powerful natural and safe...